Hey, Scott here from whattype.com. And a question came through in a Facebook group this morning that I thought was worth addressing here in a video. And this is from a woman named Amanda who's trying to settle on her type. She says, I have such a small percentage difference between being an INFJ and an ISFJ. How do I figure out which I am? What is the main biggest dif difference? Can someone really dumb it down for me, LOL? So the first thing that comes to mind when I read this question is that it's important to make a distinction between test results and what's actually happening in your brain. All tests are flawed inherently. It's essentially impossible, or at least we're very far at this point from ever producing a test that is going to elicit um, you know, objective answers and produce reliable results. So, um, Amanda is not actually on the fence between being one of these two types. Amanda is either INFJ or ISFJ. The two types have completely different primary and inferior functions, and it's just that the test um, didn't do the best job of being able to figure out between the two. That's really all that it comes down to. So uh, unfortunately, an even less accurate way of figuring out your type is to just ask people on uh, Facebook because you'll get, you know, people mean well and, um, you know, people want to help and you'll get a lot of responses um, and it's going to be all over the place. And a lot of times the most popular responses are going to be the most misleading. So for example, on this post, uh, someone commented, the, the most popular comment on here is, uh, if you don't know your ISFJ, there you go. That is not true. Uh, in fact, um, the fact that you are asking this sincerely on a Facebook group, and you know, from looking at the comments, this is something you care about, indicates to me that there is a well over 90% chance that you are an INFJ. ISFJs are rarely very interested in type. It is generally just too esoteric and jargony. So I talk to ISFJs about type sometimes. Uh, and you know, if, you, if you explain things well enough and, and you keep it very practical, they're interested. But you are not going to encounter a lot of ISFJs who are just like, I have to figure out my type. I can't tell if I'm an ISFJ or an INFJ. They just don't get that deep into it. INFJs, on the other hand, are very complex and just feel different from other people and we're trying to figure out what the hell is going on. INFJs are far more interested in type than ISFJs. INFJs are more interested in type than any type. So. I would, just by virtue of the fact that you even asked, I would honestly bet my own money without even knowing anything else that you are an INFJ. <clears throat> now that's not conclusive at all. I would certainly want to ask some other questions uh, before I would say like, in my opinion, in my assessment, you are one or the other. The two uh, questions, the two first questions that would come to mind, the two that I'll offer you here to help you decide are this, number one, do you feel basically the same as most other people or do you feel just fundamentally different from most other people? Now, ISFJs, unless they're, you know, unless there's a reason, like they're eight feet tall or something, will feel just in their gut basically the same as most other people. INFJs will almost universally just feel different, just have always felt different uh, for as long as they can remember from other people in general. That is a pretty good indication between INFJ and ISFJ. <clears throat> the other one is uh, how loud do you like to listen to music? Um, now, the vast majority of INFJs like to listen to music very loud, like loud enough to feel it in their bones. And the reason why is because our primary function introverted intuition, it's, uh, it's very unconscious and it's, it takes place entirely inside of our minds. So that's when our, our brains are kind of shifting around data and perspectives, sort of like a Rubik's cube to produce insight. And this is what our brain just snaps back to all the time. But at a certain point, 
we need to ground ourselves in sensory reality. If we just, you know, if we were unable to actually engage with the sensory world, we would start to feel completely ungrounded and be very uncomfortable. So we need to do things that put us back into our bodies and back in the moment. Now, there are many different versions of this. A common one is loud music. Almost all INFJs I know like to listen to music very loud. And this is not the case with ISFJs. ISFJs tend to be much more gentle and will not like really loud music in the vast majority of cases. Now, this can take the form of you know, other sensory immersive experiences. So INFJs will also tend to enjoy sports that put them into the moment. Uh, so, you know, I used to play baseball, for example. So when you're batting, you, it, you are just brought into extroverted sensing. You have no choice. Like you are, you know, in that moment, you have to track that ball and you have to be physically engaged. Um, so, you know, there's that, there's, you know, so sex, drugs, rock and roll, sports, um, you know, there are a lot of different versions of this, but, uh, you know, and they're healthy and unhealthy versions, but ISF, uh, INFJs will uh, need something to really ground them in the sensory world and loud music is almost universal. So I hope that helps. Um, if you're watching this and you are trying to get clarity on your type, I do Skype sessions at my or sorry, whattype.com slash my type. And if you're interested in learning how to be a personality profiler, you can go to whattype.com slash lessons. Uh, Amanda, I hope that answers your question. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions, I'd be happy to uh, give my feedback on those too. Uh, just go ahead and post them below the video and I'll let you know what I think. Thank you.